officials assessing the aftermath of a twister in the Western District. A business and church, the victims of thieves. And Miss Teenager Bahamas Universe gearing up to compete internationally. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina wolf and As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping the news this evening, education officials on Grand Bahama expressing great relief tonight. Concerned that Sunday's freak weather system may have caused significant damage to the new junior high school currently under construction. Officials headed west today for an assessment. Megan Shepard has our top story. District Superintendent for West Grand Bahama, Ivan Butler, touring Holmes Roth Junior High School, following reports of a twister in that western community. Reports are that a twister touched down on the grounds where the school is still currently under construction. Butler says that thankfully, the structure did not incur any damage. We are very fortunate that no extensive damage was done to the building itself. We understand that it was a temporary office that was placed on the outside the perimeter of the school and that apparently was lifted and carted away by either a strong gust or funnel cloud. He says that he is pleased with the quality of work happening at the school at this time. And the school seemed to be coming on um, very good. Um, it is anticipated that it would be ready for the new school year, the new academic year 2020 and not 2019, but we are very pleased with the work that's going on at this time. This building is um, capable of holding somewhere around 26 classrooms and about 8 to 10 labs. So it's, it's, um, it is a state-of-the-art building and it is um, accessible for handicap students and teachers and so we are very pleased with what is happening. The junior school is expected to bring much needed relief in that western community as the 8 Mile Rock High School is currently the only school that caters to both junior and senior high school students. Butler says that parents and residents are anxious for the opening of this new school. To a certain extent the community is a bit disappointed that it is not opening for this new school year 2019. And so we're just anticipating that work will continue. We are, we are happy with that workmen are on site and work is progressing. And so we just hope that, that in time that funds are available so this, this um, project can be completed in time. The junior school will also serve as a shelter for the Western District during the times of hurricanes or other emergencies. Megan Shepard, Sedanas, Network News. In other news, a local businessman is lamenting the state of crime in the community. He says he believes the criminal element is pushing struggling entrepreneurs out of business. He's speaking from his own experience and says at this point he is at a loss as to what to do next. Shamila Mizik has his story. Owner of Sinclair's Bar and Grill located on the Ruby Golf Course, Clement C. C. Campbell says he got a phone call about 9.45 Tuesday morning advising that there had been a break-in at his establishment. Campbell says he believes the perpetrators used a vehicle to dismantle the bars to enter the building. He says the culprits made off with virtually everything. They took the sound equipment, the freezer, the fridge, all the inventory, all the tissue paper, all the hand towel, all the seasoning. Everything in the fridge. They took everything. They carried the fridge. They carried the freezer. So where do you go from there? You know, and then this is not free. I have to pay landlord. You know, I have to pay light. I have to pay water. I have to pay power. So. But Campbell says this is not the first time his business has been targeted. It happened exactly one week earlier. But those set of teeth were smaller. They came in through the window, you know, the freezer behind me. And I just came in like 10 after 12 just to check. And apparently they probably saw me coming and they ran, they left. They didn't carry anything but the float, which was which was so much. And they, they couldn't carry the TV because they were trying to get out the window and that couldn't work. But this set of TVs are like, these are pros. You know, they know what they was coming for and they know what they need to bring. So they did that. He's asking anyone with any information that can assist to please contact the police. And he hopes the theft comes to an end. I hope that the country pick up, not their country, actually, Grand Bahama, pick up and turn around, that these persons can get a job. 
and they've been stuck coming into people's business in their home, in the churches. Yes, so that's I hope that the government do something about the employment situation in Grand Bahama. I'm not blaming the government for the break-in. I'm just speaking for the country and the island of Grand Bahama. That these young persons who are doing this, or persons, would find something constructive to do. Jamila Mizek, SNS Network News. Thanks, Jamila. Well, meantime, a local church is suffering the same fate tonight. Police officials are investigating the vandalism and theft at Freedom International Ministries on Gambier Drive. Saturday evening, just before 5 o'clock. Worship leader Tony Lowe says when he arrived at Freedom International Ministries for praise team practice on Saturday evening, he realized that something was wrong. I noticed that the two flat screen TV monitors that we have for service were missing, um, but at the time I thought maybe they took them down to do something, maybe they were cleaning. Uh, I noticed that there was a trail of chairs, like a mountain of chairs leading up to one of them. And then that's when I noticed that the brackets were broken. He, along with the pastor at Freedom International Ministries, Bishop Sobe Camp, says that the crooks removed a long list of items. As I continued to look around, I saw that they even had taken the time out to drink some Perrier water and leave it in the windowsill. I went, in, I went back to Bishop's office to see if they did anything in there since the door was open and I saw that they had actually tried to pull the AC unit from the wall. The two monitors we have during the service, it's sort of, you know, it keeps the interest of the people. They moved a uh, guitar, an electric guitar, along with two amplifiers. They removed one of the uh, uh, computer off my desk. They removed a communion set. I guess they figured that could probably sell. This is the second time vandals have broken into Freedom International Ministries. Bishop Kem says this may be a testament to Grand Bahama's economy. It's very sad that they have to, you know, resort to, to crime. But the fact is, the reality is there are a lot of people that do not have any means of income. And as a result of it, this is probably, you know, people are be becoming more creative now. Like they have no regard for the people of God or the, the house of God. It's like they don't even care anymore. Mm -hmm. Like back in the day, we used to have some sort of respect for churches. Like you wouldn't try to do anything at a church. The Christian leader says he has been in touch with local police officials since this incident. I got a call to say that they were they were captured. They were in custody. Yeah, and, yeah, and, they didn't say. All they said was that there were seven churches and I think 11 establishments. Still with news from the crime beat, police are reporting that one of the men who were shot at a business establishment on East Sunrise Highway almost a month ago has died. The man identified as Patrick Young died in hospital this morning. Young and another man were shot around 4 a.m. on Sunday, July 7th, when a man entered a business establishment and opened fire on them. The second victim is still detained in hospital. Last month, 33-year-old Edvardo Evans of Bruce Avenue was arraigned before Magistrate Charlton Smith on two counts of attempted murder in connection with that double shooting. Bail was denied and he was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. Now the case was adjourned to September 10th for service of a voluntary bill of indictment. Well, police have identified the young woman who was killed in that traffic accident over in Abaco on Sunday morning as 31-year-old Catrice Juliet Maycock of Freeport, Grand Bahama. A medical doctor, Maycock was employed with the Grand Bahama Services as a gynecologist. We understand that Dr. Maycock is a graduate of St. Augustine, Augustine College in New Providence at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. Now, police also say the male driver of the vehicle vehicle in which Dr. Maycock was a passenger is presently detained in doctor's hospital. The driver of the second vehicle involved in that head-on collision is assisting police with their investigations into that fatal traffic accident. And coming up, he is ready for the world of entertainment and we will give you a taste of his talent. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, covering Pigeon Key, Cherokee Sound, and your part of The Bahamas.